Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed, and he was always human when he talked. But still he fluttered pulses when he said good morning and he glittered when he walked and he was rich yes richer than a king and admirably schooled in every grace in fine we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place so on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread and richard cory one calm summer night went home and put a bullet through his head today we are going to appreciate the poem richard cory by edwin arlington robinson Edwin Arlington Robinson was born in Hetide, Maine, the United States of America. He grew up in a family of modest means. His father was a lumber merchant, but he suffered financial difficulties. Robinson had to work in his family's textile mill to help make ends meet. He was a solitary child and had a difficult relationship with his family, particularly his father. His father disapproved of his interest in writing and literature. Robinson attended local schools and showed a talent for writing from a young age, but he did not attend college due to his financial problems. He lived most of his life in poverty and struggled to make a living from his writing. He had a few brief romantic relationships, but he never married and had no children. Robinson suffered from alcoholism for much of his life. It affected his health and his ability to write. In the early 1920s, He began to receive recognition for his work and he was awarded several prestigious literary prizes including three Pulitzer prizes for poetry. Despite his success, Robinson remained a solitary and reclusive figure. He spent much of his life in New York City. and wrote many of his most celebrated poems in a small rented room. He died in 1935 at the age of 65 from cancer. Edwin Arlington Robinson's poetry is known for its introspective and melancholic themes. His poems explore the darker aspects of the human experience. He often wrote about outcasts and misfits, and his characters are often struggling with loneliness, isolation, and unfulfilled desires. Many of Robinson's poems deal with themes of disillusionment, disappointment, and the failure of the American dream. He frequently portrayed characters who are marginalized by society either because of their social class, their gender, or their unconventional desires. He was also interested in exploring the human experience of mortality and the inevitability of death. Overall, Robinson's poetry is characterized by its deep psychological insight and its exploration of the human condition. These are some of his widely read poems. The first poem Richard Cory is the one that we are going to appreciate today. If you are interested in reading rest of the poems, 
please go to this website poemhunter.com. By the time of the publication of this poem, Richard Corey, in 1897, America had been recovering from two economic depressions, the Panic of 1893 and the Panic of 1896. The Panic of 1896 caused a wave of bank failures and business bankruptcies. It also led to high levels of unemployment and a general economic downturn. According to some historical details, a number of bankers committed suicide in Chicago when the National Bank of Illinois failed. Interestingly, in the poem Richard Corey, the protagonist commits suicide at the end of the poem. Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed, and he was always human when he talked. But still he fluttered pulses when he said, Good morning, and he glittered when he walked. And he was rich, yes, richer than a king, and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So on we worked and waited for the light, and went without the meat and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. In the first stanza of the poem, the speaker describes Richard Corey, a wealthy and respected man in the community, as he walks through the town whenever Richard Corey went downtown. Downtown is a commercial area or a business center of a town. The speaker notes that whenever Richard Corey passes by, the people on the street or people on the pavement, here we people can be ordinary people or people who belong to working class. People on the pavement stop to look at him, admiring his appearance. The speaker describes him as a gentleman from soul to crown. He suggests that he is not only physically attractive, but also carries himself with great poise and dignity. The phrase imperially slim also reinforces the idea that Richard Corey is not only physically perfect, but also possesses an almost regal or royal quality that sets him apart from the ordinary people on the street. Here in the last line, clean favored means clean featured. This phrase describes someone whose facial features are attractive and well formed. So overall, the first stanza suggests that Richard Corey not only possesses a charming personality, but also a physically attractive appearance. In the second stanza, the speaker describes Richard Corey's appearance and demeanor, his behavior. The first line of the stanza indicates that Corey is dressed simply but smartly. The second line suggests that he was unassuming and relatable in his conversations with people. He was always human when he talked. This indicates that despite his wealth and status, he was not aloof or arrogant. However, 
the third and fourth line suggest that even though he was humble and approachable, he still managed to capture the attention and admiration of those who are around him. But still he fluttered pulses. When he said good morning, his polite greeting good morning was enough to make people's hearts skip a beat. Furthermore, when he walked, he seemed to glitter, maybe due to the way he is dressed because of his fine clothes. And also this suggests his confident manner. The overall effect of this stanza is to paint a picture of Richard Corey as a man who was both ordinary and extraordinary. In the third stanza, the speaker continues to describe Richard Corey but focuses on his wealth and social class. The first line establishes that Corey was extremely wealthy, even more so than a king. The second line suggests that Corey was not just wealthy, but also had a certain level of education and refinement. He was admirably schooled in every grace, meaning that he had been trained to be polite, well-mannered, and elegant in his speech and behavior. Third line suggests the idea that the townspeople saw Richard Corey as everything they could want to be. The final line, to make us wish that we were in his place, emphasizes that the speaker and the other townspeople envied and idolized Richard Corey. Overall, this stanza continues to build the image of Richard Corey as an almost godlike figure who possesses every desirable trait and attribute, including immense wealth, education, and social grace. In the last stanza, the speaker describes the di difficult and unhappy lives of the people in Richard Corey's community. So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. They work hard but without hope or joy and are forced to go without basic necessities like meat. They are also unhappy with their circumstances as evidenced by their cursing of the bread they must eat. In the first line, the light has several interpretations. One interpretation is that the light represents hope or a better future. The people in the poem are described as working hard and going without basic necessities such as meat, which suggests they are struggling financially. Despite this hardship, they continue to work and wait for the light, which could represent the hope for a better life, a better financial situation or a brighter future. Another interpretation of the light could be that it symbolizes a sense of purpose or direction. The people in the poem are described as working, but it's not clear what they are working towards. The light could represent a goal or a purpose that they are striving for which gives their work, meaning and direction. So in the last two lines, the writer reveals a shocking truth. Richard Corey takes his own life, suggesting that his wealth and status were not enough to bring him true happiness. The final line of the stanza reveals that Richard Corey is not as content as he appears. Here the phrase, one calm summer night, is also important. It carries a sense of tranquility 
and peacefulness. The implication of the phrase is that Richard Corey's suicide is unexpected, even inauspicious and makes his tragic end all the more poignant. It also creates a sense of finality as if this one moment marked the end of a life and an era. The use of such specific time and place emphasizes the stark contrast between the idyllic summer night and the tragic end that occurred. The very last line went home and put a bullet through his head reveals a very shocking and unexpected news about Richard Corey's suicide. What are the themes discussed in the poem? First one is appearance versus reality. The poem explores the contrast between Richard Corey's outward appearance of wealth, elegance, and composure and his inner turmoil and despair that ultimately leads to his tragic end. Another theme is social class and inequality. The poem highlights the social divide between the wealthy and the poor as the narrator and his fellow townspeople are depicted as being envious of Richard Corey's wealth and status. Isolation and Loneliness. Richard Corey's isolation and loneliness are hinted at in the poem. Even though he was human when he talked with the townspeople, it's quite obvious that Richard Corey and people on the pavement did not have a close relationship. This also suggests sense of alienation in the part of Richard Corey. Despair and Suicide The poem ends with the sudden and shocking twist as Richard Corey takes his own life despite his outwardly perfect existence. The poem thus explores the dark side of the American dream and the pressure and expectations that come with success and wealth. Another theme is perception and perspective. The poem invites the reader to question the narrator's reliability and biases as the townspeople's envy and admiration of Richard Corey are contrasted with his tragic end, leading to a powerful commentary on the limits of human perception and the dangers of putting people on pedestals. Unattainability of happiness. The poem suggests that material success and will cannot guarantee happiness, as Richard Corey, despite all his wealth and charm, is ultimately consumed by despair and takes his own life. Another theme is the illusion of Perfection. The poem critiques the notion of perfection as Richard Corey is depicted as being outwardly perfect but inwardly flawed and unhappy. Envy and resentment. The townspeople's envy of Richard Corey's wealth and status is contrasted with their resentment with the, their own lives, highlighting the danger of envy and the importance of finding happiness within oneself. The last theme is the fragility of life. The sudden and unexpected ending of the poem underscores the fragility of life and the fact that no one is immune to tragedy, no matter how perfect their life may seem. So these are the themes discussed in the poem Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson. Let's try to identify the techniques used by the writer in the poem Richard Corey. The poem is notable for its use of irony as it describes how everyone in the town envies Richard Corey 
and wishes to be like him, but it turns out that he is secretly unhappy and ultimately takes his own life. The poem uses vivid imagery to describe Richard Corey's appearance and behavior, such as his imperially slim figure and his habit of quietly arraying himself. The writer has employed these three sound devices throughout the poem, alliteration, assonance and consonance. I have highlighted them in three different colors so it would be easy for you to identify the examples. What are the metaphors used in the poem? Here the phrase the light metaphorically suggests hope, these people's aspiration towards a better future and also sense of guidance and supervision. And interestingly, the whole poem can be seen as a metaphor for the emptiness of material success, as the townspeople's admiration of Richard Corey is shown to be misguided and superficial. What are the examples for enjambment or unknown lines? In the second stanza, he this line, but still he fluttered pulses when he said good morning. This is an example for enjambment. In this stanza, in fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. Third line continues up to the fourth one. In the last stanza, and Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. Third line continues up to the fourth line. So those are examples for run-on lines. The writer has used repetition as a technique in the poem. He repeats some of the words in the poem. For example, the pronoun we is repeated in some of the stanzas. In the first stanza, we people. Then in the third stanza, we were in his place, we thought. In the last stanza also, he repeats the pronoun we. We worked. So this repetition of the pronoun we creates a sense of unity and cohesion about the we people on the payment. What about the symbols used by the writer in the poem? Here Richard Corey himself can be seen as a symbol of material wealth and success which the townspeople admire but ultimately find unfulfilling. And also in the last stanza, meat and bread can be symbols used in the poem. Meat symbolizes the comfortable, luxurious life that these people cannot afford to. Bread simply suggests the ordinary life that the working class people are leading. The writer has used a hyperbole in the third stanza, and he was rich, yes, richer than a king. The phrase richer than a king is simply an exaggeration. Throughout the poem, we can identify a regular rhyme scheme. What's the rhyme scheme here? Town, crown, him and slim, arrayed, set, talked, walked. So we can identify a regular rhyme scheme of a, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. Another technique used by the writer is Zishura. What are the examples for this technique? In the last stanza, the writer has used a comma in between the lines. So on we work, there's a comma. And even in the second line, and went without the mean, there's a comma. Also in the third line, there's a Come on now, a sejura is a pause that occurs within a line of poetry. What is the point of wave used in the poem? The poem is told from the perspective of an unnamed speaker who is a member of the town where Richard Corey lives. 
This point of view allows the reader to see the townspeople's admiration and envy of Corey while also hinting at the truth that they are missing. So these are the techniques employed by the writer in the poem Richard Corey. And that brings us to the end of today's session on Booktopia Lessons. I hope you found it informative and educational. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you in the next lesson.